So far, we have looked into the more mathematical definition of signals. As electrical engineers, we typically experience these signals as sources in circuits. Now there is a generic symbol for a source, which typically looks like a circle and has two connections. If you want to indicate that the source is a DC signal, you can add a plus and a minus to indicate the polarity of the DC signal. Generic AC signals, so whatever is an AC signal, whatever is time dependent, is very often indicated by a sine wave in here. Now, some people would also use that for purely sinusoidal signals only, but most of the times this would be an, any kind of an arbitrary AC signal. And then there are more specific symbols for the specific waveforms. There are pulse signals, there are square signals, which look very much alike, but still a little bit different. A sawtooth is represented by something that looks very similar, like the waveform itself, and a triangular signal. Now, there are some IEEE standards that actually standardize those signals. There is a standard for the US version of how those signals look like, and there are also standards for the European version of those signals. The physical laws are all the same all over the world, but apparently there was no consistency on how those signals were supposed to look like, and it was more a flavor of how people would love to see them. A very specific signal is, for example, the one indicating the line voltage, that is the AC grid by a rectified half-wave sine wave here, which could as well be represented by an AC signal over here. This is just to give you an overview of some of the most common symbols of sources. Now, a very handy tool that I would like to introduce you to are SPICE simulators. SPICE stands for Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis. SPICE itself is a rather old programming language with including a solver that is running from the command line. There are implementations adding a graphical user face to that command line based program. One of the most popular nowadays is LT Spice. LT Spice is freely available. It's provided by a company called Linear Technologies, which are bought by analog devices, but still they kept the name of LT Spice for Linear Technologies. It's freely available and it's running on Mac and it's running on Windows computers. Now, even there are also other simulators, SPICE-based simulations are a de facto standard for many engineers working with analog circuits. SPICE has included a couple of sources, DC sources, pulse sources, sine waves, exponential functions are some of the most basic ones. Frequency modulation is a rather more advanced signal. And then even more advanced is an arbitrary signal. So that could be anything, which is a piecewise linear signal. So you define some data points and the solver of SPICE would put in the necessary amount of points to interpolate between your data points and make it a linear line wherever it meets the actual value of the source. You can either program them directly in the user interface, or you can read them in from an external file. Now, one very specific thing for a SPICE simulator and the SPICE simulation solver is that it puts the data points, the sampling points, only where it actually needs it. If you, for example, have a DC signal that is not changing in time at all, the SPICE solver would only put in the necessary point it needs for the specific output that you're asking it for, and those points would be rather far away. They don't need to be equidistant, so it can actually speed up and slow down the amount of points as it needs it. Looking at another example of a waveform, for example, this blue signal here, which could represent the transition of a digital signal 
from zero to one or from low to high. The spy simulator would put in some points wherever it needs it. And all of a sudden the signal starts changing. A lot of things are happening in the circuit. So it would actually put more and more points and sampling points in the sharper the edges are. And when the signal is actually not changing at all, the circuit is stable, it would go back putting in fewer points. Nevertheless, the spy simulator can still very well do Fourier series and Fourier analyzes. Now that was a comment on the sulfur, on the mathematical background, on the calculation engine running when you press the run button in the simulation. Another thing is the data you actually feed it with. And the data you're feeding it with it are the models of the components. You could easily just use simple models of the components that speeds up the calculation time, but is also a rougher estimation of how an electrical circuit would actually behave when you build it in the lab. Almost all of the electronic component vendors are providing simulation models for their components, for their integrated circuits, but also for passive components, for inductors, capacitors, whatever you would like to model. And you can put those together in a spy simulator. Most of the models that you download from the internet, from the vendor's web pages, are actually very detailed models, increase the simulation time, and also increase the probability of actually failing that means that the solver can actually crash. But on the other hand, if you actually get your circuit up and running, you would get a very precise estimate on how that circuit would behave in the lab. Another word on the symbols. There are different symbols for voltage sources and there are different symbols for current sources. Now, the first ones we've looked at were mainly looking like a voltage source but some people try to indicate either with that specific line through here or the line across that it's a current signal which is represented by that source. Some others use arrows like this one here to represent the current or a European version of a current source representation on the two circles here. And then there are specific examples of voltage sources like a battery which can be represented by its positive pole and its negative pole or a photovoltaic source, which is a, a represented current source looking like, like this. Now a specific category of sources are dependent sources. They could be dependent on other voltage signals or current signals, so electrical signals but they could also be dependent on other physical parameters. First of all, you would indicate that a source is dependent either by drawing the signal rectangular, like a generic source here. Instead of drawing the signal round, you would draw it as a rectangular, as a square, or in other cases, and this is the same meaning, you would put an arrow through, like in this case here. And if you want to indicate that it is actually a current source that is controlled, you either square the current symbol, like in this case here, or in that case. Now, a current source is always identified by a line cutting the wires. If this is the wires here, you have one terminal and the other terminal. And a current source indicates that you never can leave a current source open, so you're not allowed to cut the wire, you always have to at least short it or put an impedance on it. Whereas in a voltage source, like a battery, for example, which you're not supposed to short, so you're not supposed to connect the two terminals of a voltage with a wire. This is the way of remembering whether it's a voltage or a current source with the horizontal line as in the current case or with the vertical line in the voltage case. This is another notation using the arrow inside the symbol to indicate that it's a current source and then the arrow going through the symbol indicating that you're speaking about a dependent source. 
or this is a DC voltage source indicated by the polarity of it, and then indicating that it's a dependent source by drawing the symbol squared. Now the parameter, a dependent source is depending on, could be either another electrical signal like a voltage or a current, or it could be any other physical parameter. For example, it could be the amount of photons hitting a surface as in the case of a photovoltaic cell, a solar cell. Then you would put the solar irradiation as the controlling parameter, or it could be, for example, the temperature. Then you would put a factor like theta here, and you can write that right next to the arrow or right next to the square, which signal the source is actually depending on. Now, spy simulators have built in controlled sources. They have dependent voltage sources built in, and they have dependent current sources built in. And then the specific ones, the voltage sources, which are actually dependent on another voltage, are represented by the letter E. So the component is just simply called an E generator. Or if they are current dependent, then it's an H component you are looking for. Like R is a resistor, B is a voltage, I is a current. A voltage dependent voltage source is the letter E. A current dependent voltage source is represented by the letter H. An application example for an E source is an operational amplifier, which is controlled by a voltage, the voltage between the two inputs of the operational amplifier, and the output of an op amp is as well a voltage. The current controlled voltage sources are called trans impedance amplifiers. And the opposite of that one would be a trans conductance amplifier. So the output is a current, and the controlling parameter is a voltage source. Those spiced components are represented by a letter G. An application example for that are MOSFETs, which stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. In MOSFETs, the drain source current is typically controlled by the GM factor, the drain's conductance gain of a MOSFET, and the controlling parameter is the gate source voltage. Current controlled current sources are in SPICE represented by the letter F, and a typical application of that is a bipolar transistor, a bipolar junction transistor, that's what the J stands for here. And the equation for a bipolar transistor is defined as the collector emitter current being controlled by a factor beta, the current gain, times the base current of that exact same transistor. 